All righty. So I'm going to take us in a little bit different direction. And instead of talking about technology so much, we're going to talk about people for a minute. You see the subtitle there is just a little bit on building community. Yes, breathe it in. It is our reality. Uh, I have found <clears throat> that this community, the wireless community, um, it's pretty vibrant. There's a lot of really smart people out there willing to share information if you're willing to uh, go to those places and find it. Um, I've also learned, and I'm going to show you um, an example of, of why I think I've learned what I'm about to say, that successful communities kind of move forward as a group of individuals, right? <clears throat> Are we okay? So in my various roles, here's my NASCAR slide. Um, I get to work, I get to teach, I get to write a lot. I've got a lot of opportunities to interact. Um, it's not just all delivery. I actually um, have to maintain some kind of credibility um, as I get to do all of these things outside of my professional roles, and I do wear a lot of hats. You know, I've done everything from coach Little League and basketball for a lot of years. Um, I spent 10 years in the military where I learned that, you know, you work as a team or you don't survive. So my whole notion of community comes from, a, you know, several different angles. Um, and for this particular community, you know, when it comes to wireless, when it comes to staying in touch with what other people are doing, um, here's my advice, and I won't read, I won't read everything. Um, verbatim, but I do want to take you, as you read through the bullets, I do want to take you to the last bullet there. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second, but first we have to, um, first we have to uh, talk about my two-minute Twitter history. But <clears throat> before I leave this slide, on the first bullet there, the be involved, um, there is so much on the web, not to state the obvious, but between the podcasts and the blogs, whether you do them or you read them, um, I would also encourage you to leave comments. I would encourage you to actually foster discussion. It's one thing to consume the work of somebody. It's like, okay, that was a good podcast. Okay, that was a good blog. <clears throat> you can either just be complimentary and say, yeah, you're, you know, you hit it dead on. I found this useful. Or, you know, you're a complete idiot. You have this wrong. And here's why I think that. And that's what fosters discussion. And again, that's what kind of moves everybody together, you know, changing each other's minds or strengthening um, the things that we think we know that <clears throat> maybe we need to have enforced or maybe we need to be kind of, you know, correction vectored in a little bit of a different direction on. But by all means, you know, read and heed. And now let me take you to my two minute Twitter history. Way back when, I was a Twitter hater. I saw absolutely no value in it, you know. And again, you know, I kind of went from the, you know, what is this idiotic app, um, to the, to the uh, tattoo I'm going to show you here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Real quick, in my organization, we found out that Twitter was being used as essentially a de facto help desk. So we had to figure out some way of reining that in, and that's its own story, but we did. We figured out a way to at least get on top of it, make peace with it. As I was going through that exercise, I discovered a lot of you people on Twitter. Um, at the time, I remember Devin, I remember Andrew Von Nagy, uh, those are the names that bubble up. It seemed like the all Arrowhive show at that point, for what it's worth. But these people were not only sharing information, they were listening to others. It's like, okay, this is a good, respectful exchange of information, and it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so I kind of became a believer. I started having exchanges with other people, and I realized, okay, there is something to this. <clears throat> now let me take you to my boss. My boss is Pete, my most excellent boss, if Pete ends up seeing this. Um, as we go off to conferences, Pete likes to say, make sure you do some networking, right? Make sure you meet with other people. Make sure you exchange ideas. The problem with that is we all don't get to go to the conferences, all of the conferences that we would like to go to. It's just not enough time, not enough money. Even at the events, you know, think about your time here. Pretty soon this will be in your rearview mirror, and you'll know that you didn't get to spend enough time with some of the people you really wanted to get to chat with. Right? It just isn't possible 
to reach out to everybody in the way you would like to and spend the time you want to with them. So that's where I see social media kind of comes in and kind of augments your conference opportunities. So my two examples there, just a kind of a, a list of people that I would never have really any chance to interact with that I frequently find value um, talking with, and yes, me and Billy Idol are tight. <laughs> it's just really been empowering to me. Um, and then I want to uh, mention my hashtag, WiFiQ. Um, I'm going to bring you back to that in a second. And that's going to probably make the point better, better than anything here. Um, but before I take you there, real quick, a little bit of contact time. Every day goes a long way. This is why I say every day can be a mini conference. If you can bust loose five or ten minutes to interact with people, you'll find that there's so much that you can tap into. And again, I won't read you through all the bullets, but this is the value getting out there. It's not just Twitter, but you know the blog thing and LinkedIn. This is what all of that has done for me. So it's been really, um, really neat to realize that, okay, it's not just a place to put cat pictures and such. There's actually value here. Um, perhaps the last bullet is the most important. Um, the wireless LAN world, our world, it really is a pretty interesting community. Let me leave you with this before I take you to our Wi-Fi queue um, example. So there's my contact information. The big one up here is I tweet at Wired Not. Um, if anybody wants to check it out. And let me show you what this whole Wi-Fi Q thing is about, if you're not familiar. About a year ago, just on an experiment, I thought to myself, OK, wouldn't it be cool? Everybody's out there talking anyways. It just happens. It doesn't need my help. Wouldn't it be kind of neat if there was a way to congeal on a topic every day? You know, throw something out there, sometimes controversial, sometimes safe, but let's just see what people's opinions are. Not only get my questions answered, I throw out a question, there's discussion, but watch all the little side conversations take place that spawn off of that, that initial question. And it's been really neat. So what you're seeing here is this morning's. I asked, this is every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday. Um, it posts about 5.50 a.m. Eastern time is when I schedule it. But this morning, and this was a guest one, um, it's not always me. Sometimes people say, can you ask this? Uh, we'll do that. So back to Wi-Fi Q. Um, again, sometimes people will give them to me. They'll DM me, hey, can you ask this on your daily thing there? So this was one that was sent in uh, by somebody else. So I'm moving it along. And again, this was this morning uh, about DFS, about radar. There's no right or wrong answer to any of these. And people say, well, this is my interpretation. This is my impression. So this young lady posted hers. And if you were to open it up, and Jake's in there, oops, I botched it. You get the point, um, given that we're running out of time. Hi, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So we'll let Pete stay up there. The point is, again, back to that, every day can be a little mini conference. There is just tremendous value in throwing something out there. I will have anywhere from, say, a dozen to hundreds of little exchanges off of one daily question. I date them. You can go back and look at the hashtag and the dates. Um, I've heard people say, you know, that's pretty cool. I'm getting a lot of value out of that. I know I was on to something when I think it was like Thanksgiving. I didn't post one. It was either Thanksgiving or like the day before or something. I, I didn't post one. I gave myself a break. And two guys from Europe, they sounded like the world ended. Are you, not do are you not doing this anymore? Are you feeling okay? You know, what happened here? Did I miss it? I was like, okay, people are kind of into this. So, <clears throat> and again, this is just one example, right? And it's my little um, thing, and it's working out okay, I think. But the bottom line, right, community, getting together, talking, sharing. Um, the technology is great, but if you think about it, the technology exists for people, kind of like of the people, by the people, for the people, right? So get to know each other and you know, help us propagate that community spirit.